Hi everyone, I'm super excited to have Olympian broadcaster Tara Lipinski on today. She just started her new podcast with her adorable husband, Todd. You will love it, called Unexpecting Pod. Everyone must listen to it. Whether you're starting your journey, whether you're in the middle of your journey, there is nothing that Tara and Todd have not been through on their journey. And they do it with humor. And uh, I can't wait to have her on. So we're going to talk about the things that she's learned along the way about her journey. Hi, Tara. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Nice to see you. Thanks for joining us today. Of Um, course. I got some calls from people. Oh my gosh, Tara's going to be talking to you. I I know. I'm so excited. Me too. So excited. So Let's start talking. Um, you touch so many people's lives by, you know, talking about your journey. Um, and you and Todd are just so adorable. Just like the, I mean, it's just so much fun listening to all the episodes so far. So just tell us, like, what made you now decide to share your story? You know, I think it's been five years since we started this journey, and I think. It was just too hard to be honest. It was too hard to be in the midst of so much failure and then publicly talk about it. I think I was afraid um, that I'd hear different opinions or other things or comments that might scare me more than I already was. And I think I always fall back on it. So funny. It's been many years since I, you know, competitively figure skated. And I always fall back into athlete mode and it just felt comforting and right for me to put my blinders on and just say, this is, this is like competition. I've got to train, I've got to make this small circle and I got to, you know, I I can't have any distractions. And I think now, you know, it got, as you know, it it was a long journey and it it got pretty rough over the last, the, the last year. And I think at that point, I just had reached so many uh, disappointments and reached so many um, points where I felt like I don't think I can get back up that I almost stopped caring about if I'm sharing or not. So Todd and I privately last year started this podcast because I I wasn't quite ready to publicly do it. But in our in our home, we do it together. And it was a place to. to intimately talk about it. And we would have to stop down when things were, were not great at that moment. And we weren't really prepared to, to continue talking about it, but now I'm able to release it because we are in a more hopeful, um, situation and spot. But as anyone who struggles with infertility or has been through this process knows you're always waiting for the other shoe to drop. There's so much PTSD, so much trauma that goes along with that. So I'm just day to day getting by. (laughs) (laughs) And I I don't want to spoil the podcast for people who haven't listened, but um, who is Mila Storm? (laughs) I mean, we are are on Instagram, so. Mila Storm, it's, it's Todd's favorite story, just because, you know, a couple, four years ago, probably, I just started researching everything. That's how I found so many different accounts. I came across your account. I would be writing down, okay, what supplements is Dr. Amy saying I should, should do? Let me, let me go back and look at that. And I just, you know, it's in a, in a a beautiful community. It's worst club, best members, as we know, but there's so many women, so many stories out there that I connected to. I felt less alone. And I also gained a ton of information by snooping on my fake Mila Storm account. Uh, but there is a funny uh, story in the podcast. Yeah. Uh, I think it was episode two where Todd gives me a lot of grief on that. <laughs> yeah. And then I love what you say in the podcast. You say our path may be different, but it doesn't mean we are lost. Right. What does I, that mean I to think, you? I think for, for us and everyone has, you know, different roads, different journeys, you know, I've realized so much through this process. And I think if someone wants to do one IVF and say, you know what, this was too much. I don't want to go through with that. I'd rather seek another avenue. That's what they should do. If someone wants to do it 15 times, that's what they should do it to each their own. 
And I think in all of those different avenues, what really touched Todd and I with that saying is that, yes, it may seem difficult. It may seem impossible at times, but we're, we're not lost. There's always an avenue that you can take. You know, there's always, you know, something that you can do, whether it, it's adoption, donor eggs, surrogacy, or maybe it's also just, you know what, this didn't, this, this isn't a process that I want to continue with my partner. And we are going to figure out a life that maybe doesn't include children. And we are going to be happy and we are going to have, you know, joy in our life because we became stronger through this process. So there's just so many different avenues that I thought that saying was kind of encapsulated all of them. Yeah. And what kind of reaction have you had from people now that you've shared your story or you're starting to reveal to us what you've been through? Dr. Amy, it is by far one of the most meaningful things I've done in my life. I feel like for myself, just yeah. getting these messages, you know, as a, as an athlete and broadcaster, you get so many messages and you're like, oh, that's nice. They love my skating or they love this broadcast, but it's sort of like, okay, like, what does that really mean? And I feel like this is meaningful. They're telling me their stories. They're opening up, they're opening up and saying, I've never I haven't even told my, you know, family yet where it's just between me and my partner and this is what happened to me. And I feel like it just is opening a conversation. There's so much shame, obviously, around infertility, even though there shouldn't be. And I just feel like it is so, I don't know, heartwarming. I have gotten so many DMs. My husband's like, Terry, you've got to stop at night. I'm up to like, I'm, I'm like, but this woman's story, and do you know what she's been through? Like, I've got to right. talk to her. Right. And I don't know how to keep up, but right. that's, and that's how incredible this, this response from the podcast has been in connecting with other I'm people. So you invite people to actually DM you. Yes. Their stories. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to keep up. I'm getting, if I haven't gotten to you, I'm getting to you. <laughs> and, you know, there, you know, I always talk about like, you know, IVF is very effed up or, you know, it's not always fabulous or fun. And there are like, you know, at least five things that can happen along the way that suck. Yeah. And you guys have almost all of them. seen every, every single one of them from like no blast to not genetically normal to bad sperm to, you know, getting really sick, getting yeah. COVID. And it's like, you know, for people who, and you guys do it with humor and I imagine it wasn't so funny. Right. As you were talking about right. with humor. So, you know, what would you say to people who are on this journey, who are also dealing with those setbacks? Like, what did you do to overcome, like, the emotional part of, you know, hearing these bad things that you can share with others? Like, look, this is what I learned that helped me dealing with these awful things. Like, what would you say? Right. And I think that's... Well, first off, I just want to say you're so right. Like, there are so many different obstacles in IVF, but also in infertility, mm -hmm. even if you're not going to IVF and you're seeing a negative pregnancy test every month, that's heartbreaking as well. Right. So it's how do you cope with these disappointments of when in your mind you look around and you think, oh, I thought I was just going to get pregnant or I see my friends just getting pregnant and they didn't even know about, you know, that they were even trying. And here I am, I can't get a win. And I think, A, it taught me patience and it just, I think each obstacle for me, at least I would get down in the dumps and I don't know if this is great advice because everyone should do what they need to do. And if they want to stay positive, stay positive. But for me, I wasn't right when I would get bad news, I'd go, I would go negative. I would feel pity. I would feel, sh you know, shame. I would feel, I'd let the tears run. I would sink into my couch. I just was like, this is it. I'm never doing it again. It's over. And I let that kind of, you know, just get annoying. Mm -hmm. And then one day I woke up and I was like, no, that's not how I feel. Right. And then I decided, you know, I think it's always a choice though. Maybe I didn't want to go on, but for me, I did. Yeah. And I just would be like, okay, I have that urge back. Yeah. And that urge meant that I need to get back in the ring. Right. And did, did you ever have like, um, trolls or stupid people say mean things to you about like why you would continue this process when you've been through so much before and how would you react to them? And what advice do you have for trolls? 
Well, I know it's hard, you know, because it's funny. I think there was, and we'll talk about on the podcast. I think there was someone maybe at the clinic who was going to the clinic because I had been very private throughout this journey, but I would get some messages that were pretty harsh sometimes of, you know, you're not meant just obviously you feel a little hurt and then you would, you know, for me, I'm, I think the good thing about my career is I'm used to a lot of people with a lot of opinions and a lot of positive, but also a lot of negative opinions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I just block it. I don't read it. I just, I say, I don't even need to look at that and laugh it off now. But when it came to this, I think it was more also, you know, even friends, you have amazing, you know, friends and, and close family, but these, these things that happen in infertility and IVF, they're hard, they're delicate, they're sensitive. And sometimes people don't always know unless they've experienced it, what to say. So when you are confronted with loss and you feel like you're not getting the support from the people you 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 want it from, that's also difficult. You know what I mean? It's right. this whole world. There's so many different aspects of it, of what you're personally going through and what you and, and I think why you feel so alone and isolated. Right. And you're talking about support and listening to the podcast. It sounds like you, you know, surrounded yourself with this great village. Mm-hmm. You know, you talk about different practitioners that you've worked with. You know, can you just describe some of the support that you've received? So other people that are listening, because I always say build your fertility team. Yes. You know, build it up front. So tell us about the members of your team. So. So I feel like, and that's something I remember um, coming across one of your posts of of just like, you can't ask too many questions. And when you're wanting to find an answer, you can't ask too many questions. Don't feel afraid of, you know, asking your doctor a million questions. I think that's what I eventually really felt more confident in. I would really try to do my research, but I would come into the office, Dr. Beck at California Fertility Partners. Um, is my doctor. And, you know, halfway through the process, I really, you know, and I'm so lucky that she was like, okay, let me hear this out. Because I was like, I have this list of questions. And can you explain this? And could we do this? But I think, you know, I also had endometriosis. I have seen Dr. Orbuck, who is an amazing surgeon in Los Angeles. I've seen Dr. Najat in San Francisco or San Jose, um, life-changing. Um, I just think that there's, you know, even talking to you, it's like, it's a team. It's a team of people that surround you and lift you up. And I just think that, you know, you need that. You need that with your friends. You need that with your family. And then the the team of doctors that you have, it, it's so important. And I, I, I am grateful, you know, with the clinic I've been at, that the care that I've, I've received when I, when I really needed it, when I needed a surgery, when I needed to be in, in touch with a specialist that deals exactly with this issue, because there's a part of me too, going through this process in the podcast, I think of how many women are maybe being referred to endo surge or, you know, OBs that are doing endo surgeries that are not doing excision surgeries and how they could still be left in pain. Um, so I think building a team is really important. Yeah. And you have a great, great team and your husband. I mean, Todd and you are just, like I said, when I start, when we just started this live are adorable. I just love the back and forth and your sense of humor through it all. Was it always like that? So, no, I mean, I think that we talk about it in the podcast. So I think we had, like, I deal with things in life like that of just like the sarcastic humor, because we kind of say it like, if not at, at some point, you're just crying all right. the time. So that's no fun. Right. Um, but I think that for Todd and I, there were a lot of learning curves here and there that we, we had to figure out together of how to support each other in this process. You know, I am very type A. I had a schedule I had. I wanted to go all in. Mm-hmm. Todd is a little more laid back. And, you know, so we had to figure out how to merge those styles where we still both felt supported. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So um, what advice do you have for other people who want to share their story? Um, You know, like, how do they start? Yeah. You know, I think a lot about this because yes, I'm sharing my story, but like I said, I'm in a slightly different place now where I feel emotionally ready and able to do that, you know, in a phase where I am not 
deep in the trenches of disappointment and failure. And that makes a huge difference. So I think, again, it's to each their own. And I don't think there should be any pressure for women to share their story mm-hmm. because I realized how hard it was to share my story. And I didn't for five years. I realized how hard it is now. We're, we're filming episodes now currently yeah. that you will see. But right now I can't talk about those yet because I'm still so you know, in this, this anxiety ridden place. Um, so I feel like whenever someone feels ready to talk about it, they should, but I do think when you get to that place, if you want to, and you don't have to sharing will only open up this conversation in a a bigger and broader way where I think it will help women feel less shame because that's, that's how I feel. I feel like as much as we know, miscarriage loss, failure and infertility or IVF, is is not your fault, but there is something that I felt at least that at the end of the day, I didn't feel comfortable just blaring it to the world. And I hope that that feeling can change because it is common. Yeah. So five years ago, Tara, let's just say, let's just, you know, go backwards five years, um, starting your journey. And let's just imagine that you're giving this advice to someone who is basically you and looking in five years. What is like the one piece of advice you have for them to carry them through the five years with the strength and resilience that you always had, you know, you always had it, but what advice would you give them so they could keep going? I think it's, and you know, it's like the same advice I had to people that were starting off in sports or skating is is like, I always wrote on my little autograph, always dream. And I think there was something inside of me that I'm a realist. I am very much where I'm like, you know, not always the most optimistic. If we're going into a cycle, I'm thinking of all the possible things that could go wrong. But at the end of the day, there is a huge part of me though, that is that dreamer and that believes that, you know, if I keep just, if I want to continue this process, I have the ability to see where it takes me Mm -hmm. and I want to keep dreaming and I want to keep hoping. And yes, if one day I lose that and didn't want that, maybe that would have sent us in a different direction. But I think, you know, just staying in the game, if you still feel that urge, because you can speak to this, but it's crazy Mm -hmm. to me after doing it for five years, you could do one cycle and I sent out seven embryos and got zero. And then you send, you know, three months later, you do another cycle and you could get many embryos. So it's just this awful gambling game, but one bad result doesn't mean it's over. Yeah. Thank you for that. Lots of great words of wisdom. So tell us where can people find the podcast? So they can find it on uh, Apple Podcasts, anywhere you listen to your podcast, iHeart, Apple, Spotify is great because you can see the video version as well. And then also YouTube. So we're putting up the video version on YouTube. Awesome. And then, you you know, it's been great, Dr. Mm -hmm. Amy, is also working with these sponsors. You know, I really try to curate the group of brands or companies to be part of the podcast that can give more information. Mm-hmm. Like Risa, I, I've seen your shows of, and you always talk about Receptiva DX and all of these things that, you know, I did in my journey and adding those in as well just feels um, like I hope people that are listening are learning and I'm working very hard behind the scenes because I know I was extremely lucky to continue this journey for five years and be able to have the resources to do that. And it keeps me up at night knowing that there are women that have felt like I Mm -hmm. have felt that aren't able to do that. So um, we're working very hard right now to see if we can maybe be able to give back to people that need another cycle or need another transfer. So yeah, fingers crossed. Cross. Do you have time for just a little bit more? I oh, just yeah. I got all so time. many. We have so many That's fun fine. comments. I just want to. Here we go. I left my Would you ever, time open. I for love you, it. Dr. Thank you, Tara. Would you ever perform your Spice Girls act from a few years ago on your TV series? What is that all about? I, I did. It, yeah. It, like after I won the Olympics, there was a Spice Girls routine I did. No, I would never do that. Nobody Google that. That was a bad moment. <laughs> okay. I think I might Google it now. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Everyone's isn't Tara beautiful. Aww. Um, IUI is hard too. Certainly someone's saying you're my role model, Tara. Carnage and miscarriage, of course, and um was the worst part. Oh, some really sweet comments here. While you're looking, yeah. I need to also shout out you. I mean, I Aww. Dr. Amy, 
I have been watching your shows. I have been scouring your post for years. And I just, again, like how I feel now wanting to be able to give back in any way I, I can. I can't imagine the crazy days you have with all of your patients and then what you do to try to spread information and to, to, to talk to these women and answer their questions. It just, you are, Thank you, are a, you are a unicorn shining <laughs> star. That was very, tanks one to no one. So yes. some fun, um, ice skating questions. Uh, what, uh, let's see here. Um, you know, how, how old were you when you started skating? What made you become a figure skater? I think those are kind of fun to hear. I mean, yeah. that's how we all got to know. No, I have a funny story them. about how it all started. Yeah. I started roller skating. So it was the eighties and roller skating was big back then. And so my mom and her friend took me and, um, my friend at the time who was also three years old to a roller rink because there was an ad in the newspaper. Uh, if you went, you get a free Care Bear and Care Bears were huge in the eighties and we wanted a free Care Bear. And in fine print, it said after like 12 lessons. So of course, you know, we had to go through with those lessons and that's how we got the Care Bear. And my mom has framed it and it says Care Bear from hell. And uh, because it really threw our life upside down, um, but we, uh, yeah, we started skating that way. And then they were like, oh, you're not too bad at it. You should try competing and end of story. That is adorable. Oh my God. So a few cute comments here. Um, I had my first IVF appointment yesterday and Tara's podcast has been my security blanket. Um, your skating got me through the chicken pox when I was a kid, loved watching you. Um, and then here, let's make this uh, another, here, I won't say last question. We'll just do it for a couple more. Yeah. Do you have a favorite 1990s song of all time? Oh my gosh, 1990s. I mean, wasn't that, I mean, I was, I feel like, wasn't that like Ace of Base error? And uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's really going back. <laughs> I mean, I kind of like push it because one day I dream singing with salt and Peppa, Tush It, you know, yes. my own cover version of, yes. you know, yes. one, day. one day, Oh my goodness. one day. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I'll just share this comment. Thanks for sharing your story. Sometimes it feels like you're the only one who is going through fertility issues. And I think that you, sh you, you make us feel less alone Yeah, and I you really like share the patient the experience. Yeah. That's the other thing I hope with the podcast, because it is heavy material of what we're going through, but we didn't want it to be a depressing um, podcast. We wanted it to be, to show the real moments of life. And, and I hope that Todd and I are able to, you know, make whoever you may make the audience that, or the viewers that are watching or listening, you know, feel hopeful and feel like they're learning information and they can kind of laugh with our funny stories. And then, you know, also feel like they can relate to the harder moments because we right. all go through them and you feel hopefully less alone. Right. Um, a very sweet comment here. It's surreal that you were my idol when I was a young skater, and now your podcast is helping me through my infertility journey. Thank you. And then someone's sharing a question about endometriosis. Did you have any symptoms of endo or was it completely silent? No. So I did have, and I actually talked to you about this, Dr. Amy. I did have, um, I did have symptoms, but again, because I don't think it's talked about enough. I don't think sometimes when you go to your OB and you explain the pain, that it's always taken seriously as it can be endo. And I didn't have the traditional cramps or bad cycles or periods, but I always laugh. I, I had butt pain. Yeah. And um, I always used to think that it was because I fell too hard on my tailbone from skating all those years. So sometimes when I would get this stabbing pain, you're like, goodness, those triple lutzes really did my body in. But later we we realized that there is a correlation there because endometriosis can be in your entire pelvic re uh, region. So that's how I started to connect with the dots. And then the first scan that Dr. Beck did on ultrasound, she she suspected that I had endo and and then the ball kept rolling. Oh, I see. Do you have any tips? Someone's asking for recovery after a laparoscopic surgery for endometriosis. Someone's just sharing that they're having their surgery tomorrow. So I one of the worst parts of my endo surgeries were, was the phrenic. Am I saying it right? The phrenic mm -hmm. nerve that when you would have all the gas from the surgery and then you'd get this horrible shoulder pain for three days yeah. and you, you girls out there with, with endo, you know what I'm talking about. And for me, the second surgery, 
light walking, but the, the more that I was able to walk a little bit mm -hmm. the first or second day, it really helped that pain. Got it. And did that butt pain, you know, the pain you just described, did that get better after your surgery? So it did, but what's unfortunate is that I kept doing cycle after cycle, pregnancy after pregnancy. So it, it keeps coming back. So I think I, I will at some point need a third surgery. Okay. So just a few more questions, oh, yeah. I promise. How have oh, you kept in shape throughout all of this? You know, it's hard, hard. Obviously, these hormones, you know, you just, day four, you're like, okay, throw out even the, the, the Lululemons. Like, those aren't going on. You know, you put on your little moo, -moo dresses and try to feel cute. Um, but I think for me, and, you know, and I obviously have, uh, take my, my fitness and nutrition and all of that so seriously from being an athlete. But I just always tried to remember I'm doing this for a bigger reason. There's this big purpose that I'm I'm doing this. And if my body is going through these changes, then I just kept thinking of that little embryo on ice and I would be like, it's fine. I can deal with this cute bloat. People may think I'm pregnant. I'm definitely not, but right. I'll deal with the right. bloat. Right, right. And Kristen McQuaid, she's lovely. Um, London is her daughter and um, London is the reason... I have a sweatshirt, I have all the merch and it just, um, you know, she's on a mission to educate, you know, people who've gone through stillbirth. So, so she just, Dr. Yeah. Amy, I, I, I messaged with her. I saw oh, her good. message. Yes. Cause I'm going through all my DMs. It touched me so deeply. And I said to her, I said, oh my goodness, you are, she has been through yeah. it and what a warrior yeah. she is. And to have gone through that. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you guys have connected. She's one of my favorite people too. Yes. Okay, Tara. Well, thank you for, for being on. Just give a shout out. Give us your uh, podcast name. Sorry. There's my dog, Sullivan, making an appearance. Wait, is your dog's name Sullivan? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> See, that's where your Sullivan, no. That's where your mind goes, Dr. Amy. Sullivan. 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 But but I get it. <laughs> I see where you're going. No, Sully is his nickname. <laughs> okay. Unexpected pod. Everyone yes. needs to subscribe. Listen, tune in. Every episode is so entertaining, so fun, heartbreaking, yet just easy to listen to. You know what I mean? Like you just make the hard stuff a little bit easier to um to deal with. Well, thank you, Dr. Amy. Yes. So you thank can you, listen Dr. to it. If you go to my, my podcast or go to my Instagram, yeah. um, you'll see all the updates for that. But yes, anywhere you listen to your podcast, that's where um, you can find unexpected. Awesome. Thank you, Tara. You're Dr. the best. Amy, we all love thank you. you for everything. We love you. I love, love you, Dr. Amy. Love you. you are <laughs> the best.